the, you're not actually in time. If, when I do that, you're only aware of that after it's actually happened, unless you're in a heightened state. And when you're, in, when, you're in, when you're a character who's in a heightened state, you're in full state. If, if the tennis player was trying to re return the serve that's coming at him at 104 miles an hour, um, in, in the real time, he or she would never be able to return that serve. Because the tennis ball's going faster than they can think. That's why they, the tennis players are all doing this shit. It is really terribly, so don't know. But this whole, this whole like, thing with the rackets and stuff, and with the ball, and the, this thing, and the twirling the racket, and they're getting into animal mode. Because when the ball comes at them, the animal returns the serve before they're aware of the fact that they returned it. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain it. It's not, yeah. Um, uh, it's why you can catch the ball before you even realize the ball is being thrown at you. It's why you can swerve the car out of the way of the sheep, or the goats, or I'm, I'm in Ireland. So <laughs> before, before you're actually aware of it. And it's consciousness versus reptilian. And, uh, all the Caltech researchers have been working on this, and they, they taught a lot of this to me, and I was teaching them what I do with actors in order to shut that discrepancy down. And you actually shut the discrepancy down. Um, the worst thing I've ever seen, ever, <laughs> That's not true, but something that pulled me was I was, I was coaching um, Rufus Sewell on a film in Regina, and um, we were in this high school filming, and in huge letters across the cafeteria wall was, think before you speak. I'm like, oh, fuck, that's the worst thing to teach children. That's the worst fucking thing. It's speak, and then figure out what was said. <laughs> it's, it's why I'm still married, because I'm, ah, blah, blah. We look at the table, we go, oh, well, that's interesting. I didn't realize, okay, good, and then we work on. <laughs> what, friendships exist because you go, blah, blah, and you deal with each other. I love you, you know? The best things that were ever said were said spontaneously. I had to think about this first before I say it. That's like a, a, yeah. on your way to Section 8. Um, what you're doing is you're, you're engaging your consciousness and trying to shut down your animal in order to be rational. Almost every line of dialogue you've ever done is a spontaneous line of dialogue. You've been in a fight. Where you going with your boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, or whatever? And blah, 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 blah! And they go, oh, fuck, I didn't even know I thought that. But you said it, your subconscious is talking. That's because you, in that point, you shut down your, your consciousness, and your, your cerebrum has actually been shut down, and you're going. What happens is this. Information comes in at you, through your five senses. It comes in. It's inside it your head. It's the reptilian part of your brain. It's the oldest part of your brain. Information comes in, and it gets registered by the animal. Then, it's sent to your consciousness, and then it's sent to your memory. And if you're having a typical off day where you're kind of in your head, and you're not really, you're disfocused, and you're not, you're not really on, and you're like, you know, you're like, whoa, you can, every time you speak, 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 <laughs> you can hear your voice, and people say stuff, and you're like, you're, you know, it's because the discrepancy between the two, the time lag's gotten really quite large. And a lot of, I'm a former manic depressive, but I hospitalized myself in, in the late 80s. And, uh, a lot of that is because that, that spaciousness has become so huge that you're not in the world, you're stuck inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. You're in your head, like, literally. Mm -hmm. By the way, this depresses a lot of people, but deja vu is when you're tired and you have so much information input coming in that it goes to the, to the reptilian part of your brain, the animal, it accidentally is sent to your memory center, and then is sent to your consciousness center. So you're only aware of it after it feels like you're remembering it. It's because you are remembering it. You're remembering it microseconds after it happened. So deja vu is actually memory. It just, it just happened a fraction of a second ago, which is why it feels so weird. If you're having deja vu, you're deeply inside of your brain. You've got to fix it back. Um, so um, uh, animal mode, which is shock of existence mode, which is focused mode, which is acting mode, Characters might actually be in a dissociative mode. There are numb is one movie. Um, there are times where your your character is actually in their head, but you the, the instrument has to not be, and then figure out how to create it. You understand? Know you the instrument has to get yourself in in, in on mode because you can't have um, sorry bronze. You can't have bronze self consciousness on camera. It has to be bronze instrument is clean, and now you've got Hamlet self consciousness on camera. See, it's different. Yeah. Um, your job is to close the gap, because right now, you're probably only hearing me clap microseconds after I actually clapped. But if Al-Qaeda blew up Mr. Hunk's t-shirt shop, and things blew up, and there was ar arms and blood and fire, and you were crawling over bodies to get out of here, trust me, you're in real time. And real time happens when you're... 
being diagnosed with cancer on your knees, um, uh, um, proposing, falling in love, getting the big part, driving your car off a cliff. You see? Giving, uh, catching your son out of your wife. And so your job as an actor is actually to find that focus. Which is that, so this whole, this whole day, I'm going to be explaining how you do it. But you all do it naturally. You can, everyone does it. Everyone can do it. Anyone attacked at knife point? Anyone fallen in love? Anyone been assaulted? Anyone, you know, like, during these things, you went into mode. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> athletes do it. Wayne Gretzky, if he stopped to think about where the puck was going to be, would never have made it to the NHL. He's working in reptilian mode, you know? But how do you assure, assure yourself that the reptilian mode is working? And you're practice, 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 and then game, and then animal. You go, and inner game of tennis was a big, big book in the 70s, and everybody read it. So it's like, it's kind of, it was kind of like the expert totally of his time. But um, it's, you practice your forehand, you practice your forehand for fucking five years, you practice that forehand. Or the, or the volley. That would have been great. <laughs> Stop with that ball! <laughs> Real athlete. Um, uh, and so you're there, and then the, 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 the shot comes at you, and your body goes, <coughs> and you do it automatically. And that's what this is. So you've done all the practice so that on action, pow, it happens in real time. And that's how you turn your ego off. Your ego, in essence, is your consciousness. It's your, anything that has the sense of I is self-destructive to an actor, because it's not about you. It's always about the other. You see? So you have to turn off your I.